unstoppable as an unmanned train heads at fast speeds towards residential areas carrying dozens of cars, some of which contain deadly and highly explosive chemicals, it's up to a veteran engineer and a rookie conductor to stop it, thus saving hundreds of thousands of lives. This is the second Could Have Been a B-Movie by Tony Scott in recent years. The last one was about a train that didn't move when it should have, this one is about a train that moves when it shouldn't. I'm starting to wonder if he just uses public transportation a ton and gets these ideas when, like, the train is running late or it leaves early and he misses it or something. On the surface, this can look kind of cheesy. A lot of disaster flakes are. This does take itself quite seriously, though, and it is honestly quite gripping. It isn't very original. I mean, I haven't watched very many of these disaster films involving trains, but even I can tell this is a pretty standard plot. But if you can forgive that, it is actually a very intense, action-packed film. It's very simple, and it is pure Hollywood, albeit it is fairly realistic. Not entirely, and if you know a ton about trains, I understand it falls apart immediately. But for those of us who don't, meaning most of the movie-going audience, we don't know when it's wrong most of the time. And the film really convinces you. We get great acting from all involved, everyone is well cast, with that said, does Kevin Dunn ever play anything other than a jerk who sticks with procedure and can't see the big picture? Denzel is charming and pretty likable as usual. He isn't challenged much by this script. And Chris Pine appears to be going very much for the role of someone who pilots a large vehicle of some sort, and even though he's kind of new, he did well in training, and he turns out to be a hero. The cinematography is pretty much what we expect from Tony Scott, if you've seen any of his recent films. A lot of tiny little zooms, nearly constant movement. Now, as for washing out the colors, Scott went pretty nuts with that in Man on Fire, and from what I hear also Domino, which I haven't watched. Here he uses it much, much less. We really get to feel the full weight of these trains. With that said, the camera is perhaps shoved right up to them, and or right under them, a bit too many times. As far as the editing goes, he mostly keeps to just regular and just letting the action play out, you know, not trying to emphasize something with his MTV-style editing. But there are a couple of things where he speeds things up and such. But on the whole, this is devoid of that annoyance. An annoyance that is present, however, is... We constantly get the news coverage of this event, and that in itself is fine, but somehow they always know exactly what's going on, and we hear it all the time. I don't know if someone took a look at the movie and said, people aren't going to understand. Even though they're seeing it happen on screen, they're not going to understand, so we need to tell them, spell it out over and over again. That got irritating. This is really easy to get into, it doesn't require very much of you. The dialogue is mostly good. The script is fine. This is genuinely funny. The characters are pretty good, but the two leads both get into their backstory some, and it just does not at all have the impact that it feels like it should have. 
and on the whole, this will not stay with you for very long. I started to forget it about as soon as the credits started rolling. But it was a fun 100 minutes. Oh, and if you do watch it, prepare for a lot of reaction shots. A lot. Tons. Oh, and this almost did not star Denzel Washington. He was unhappy about a cut in his $20 million salary out of around 90 or $100 million of a full budget, so you can tell just how much of it was going to him. And that's just really classy, you know, during a recession. His statement apparently was to the effect that he was unhappy that there was no set start date for production. But then they renegotiated, and suddenly that didn't bother him as much. Anyway, all in all, if you like this kind of thing, you know, basically disaster flick with big, dangerous, heavy train, people needing to stop it, takes itself seriously, by all means go and watch this movie. It will entertain you if you're into that kind of thing. If you're not completely sold on it, I don't know, unless you like the concept and or other of Tony Scott's films, you may just want to skip this one. Anyway, that was my spoiler for review of Unstoppable. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see